What's up, what's up? It's your boy, Ken, and I'm back to you with another one. And I, you know I gotta give it to you. So um, I wanna uh, kinda switch gears. And this is more of a question, you know, so don't get mad at me if I say something that you guys don't like. Just make sure that you ask the question and be respectful. So the question that I have is, does black fighters have more of a, uh, more of a requirement than European fighters? And the reason why I ask is because you have people like Loma Chico, who is 12 and 1, right? He is in the conversation of being a pound for pound fighter, right? He hasn't fought the best. He hasn't fought in uh, a person like Javante Davis. He hasn't fought. They say even a Robert Easton. He haven't fought a, um, a Robert Garcia. He haven't fought those type of individuals, right? And so you have this person who lost to Orlando Salido, who has a loss, who's getting more recognition and praise and put in the category than a person like uh, Terrence Crawford, who is undefeated. He's never lost. So it makes me um, ask the question, is the standard is higher? Does black fighters have to do more? Is it the same in life? And um, does it apply in boxing? You know, uh, the the black fighter has to work uh, twice as hard to get half as far because you have a, a, a person who only had literally 13 fights as a pro right if you're not counting the super six here you have a person who lost but he's considered the pound for pound king and i'm trying to understand that right and so they said uh when javante davis fought jose pedraza right oh he wasn't nobody that wasn't nothing that wasn't a step up there wasn't a step up it wasn't anything right and then once um, Loma Chico fought him and had actual, you know, a tough time and had problems, and was pretty much even in the fight until he got the knockdown. You got people sitting up there saying, oh, well, he was a different Pedraza than when he fought Javante Davis. He was weight drained and all that stuff, right? So I'm like, okay, the goalpost is moving. All right, so let's go to Triple G. Let's go to Triple G. So Triple G has never considered moving from the 160 uh, division, right? The middleweight division. So it wasn't until Charlo came. It wasn't until, you know, he came in that division and wanted to fight him until he, he started talking about going possibly going up to 168, right? And this dude literally has fought no one until he fought uh, Danny Jacobs. And he actually lost to Danny Jacobs, if you ask me, right? He lost that fight. I actually had Danny Jacobs winning eight rounds. So I don't know how he lost that lost that fight. Well, I, I do because it was big money. Uh, in Triple G versus Canelo, right? So, Triple G, let's look at it. He fought Daniel Gale, Marco Antonio Rubio, who had six losses, Martin Murray, a journeyman, Willie Monroe Jr., a journeyman, David Lemieux, a journeyman, Dominique Wade, a journeyman, Kell Brook exposed him. Danny Jacobs won, and he lost to uh, Canelo Alvarez, if you ask me. And he beat the crap out of Vinus Matarosa, who came off uh, a two-year layoff. And then he lost to Canelo again. So he was considered pound for pound the best middleweight, right, over... um, well, actually, what they consider him the top uh, top two. So that means that 
if you put Bernard Hopkins as number one, right, that means that they consider Triple G better than um, Roy Jones, Jermaine Taylor, Hagler, James Tony when he was in the, the, the division. So you have him above all these people, but they were actually fighting good fighters. Triple G wasn't fighting good fighters. So then, when they say, oh, well, who has um, Charlo fought? Who has Demetrius Andre fought, right? And then, you ask the question, who has Triple G have fought? So what makes him deserve, more deserving of a fight than Jamal Charlo or Demetrius Andre? Why are you guys telling Demetrius Andre and Jamar Charlo to fight just so Triple G and um, Canelo can have uh, a trilogy? Y'all have to stop moving the goalpost. You know what I'm saying? So is it fairness? Do you want to be fair? Or is it that you just can't accept the, the possibility of your top European fighter losing to... An African American fighter. Okay, so that's why I'm asking the question: Is it, is it, you guys being infatuated with the the actual fighter? Do you guys want to act? Uh, do you guys want to really see the the best fight the best, or is it that you just cringe at the thought of? your fighter losing to a black fighter so is it a racial thing is it uh you not just want to see the fight or is it that you guys don't uh want black fighters to progress like the european fighters because to go back to what i said loma chico didn't have to do much um to get to where he was Triple G didn't have to do much to get to where he was. Then they were talking about Chocolatito. He's not white, you know, but he's also not black. They were putting him as pound for pound until he actually fought somebody who is decent. You know, anybody just to to negate the fact that Terrence Crawford or any other black fighter is, you know, this boogeyman. Because now the, the, the person that everybody want to talk about is Usyk. Or, or Lanner Usyk. He's the next top thing. And then we talk about um, uh, Kovalev. We talk about Better Beef. We talk about all those European fighters, the Russian fighters. And how you guys are not pushing for them fighters to actually make the fight. But it's always a black fighter that is being pushed to fight each other. So the best person out there won't pan out to be another Floyd Mayweather versus uh, Canelo Alvarez. You know, they don't want to see the top black fighter versus the top European fighter because of the result. When Floyd Mayweather fought Ricky Hatton. When Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather fought um, Pacquiao, you know, they, they can't stomach that. So it just posed the question, do you guys um, think that black fighters have to work harder in order to get half as far? Do you think that the, the European fighter automatically have one foot up ahead of black fighters far as within their careers and the timeline of their career so like if they both come in they're both doing the same thing they're fighting the same fighters do you think the black fighter will get the same recognition as the white fighter as the european fighter so like for instance um javante davis fought jose pedraza he dominated jose jose pedraza Lomachenko had problems with um, Jose Pedraza, but they made excuses for why Javante Davis won, and they tried to basically discredit Pedraza 
until Lomachenko fought him. And when Lomachenko fought Pedraza, then all of a sudden, Pedraza was just, he was just like one of the greatest fighters. And Javante Davis lucky that he didn't get him when Lomachenko got him. Or could it have just been that Javante Davis was a better fighter against Jose Pedraza? Could it have been that possibility? No, right? Because you don't want to give the black fighter any type of credit at all, right? And I'm not the one to actually make the race thing. I'm just trying to, you know, show that um, there's no equality or there's no fair assessment when we're talking about fighters in general, far as black fighters versus European fighters. You know, I could talk about this all day, though. But that's all I got for now. It's your boy Ken. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. If you don't like this one, you may not like the next one. You know, um, if you have anything that you would like me to talk about, please feel free to leave me a, a comment down below in the comment section. And I'll definitely reply. And I'll get back to you at my earliest convenience. All right. I'm out.